Hello, this is Matt from Matt Heaney Apps and welcome to the sixth and final part in the series teaching you how to make the full iPhone game disappear in discs. So far we pretty much have a full game. You can play the game, there's a game over, there's a high score and it's pretty much all done. All that's left for us to do is the main menu and to polish a few things off and we're done. So let's jump back into Xcode to finish this project. Okay, so let's jump into our main menu scene, .swift, which we set up way back in part two of this series. And here we are going to make our main menu, which will look like this. So in the main menu, we will set up our did move to view function, as we want the background and all of the labels to be on the screen straight away. Now, as this entire main menu is made up of backgrounds and labels, which we've done quite a lot in this series, especially in the last video with the game over scene. It's not gonna be any fun or any use to anyone for me to talk through making all of these labels because it's the same thing over and over again. So what I'm gonna do, I'll do the background and all of the labels off screen and then show you so that you can set up your main menu the same. Because like I said, it is literally just what we've done already. There's no use in me going all over it again. So I'll see you in a few seconds. Okay. So our main menu has the background like we have done on every single scene. It's an SK sprite node. It uses the image disk background. The background size is the same as the scene. Has a Z position of zero, positioned in the center of the screen. And we have added the background. Our first label is called game title label one. It uses Pusab. Has text saying disappearing. Font size of 90. Font color of white positioned halfway across the screen, three quarters of the way up the screen, Z position of one, remember to add it. Game title label two, again uses Pusab, has the text discs, font size of 250, font color of white, positioned halfway across the screen, 60% of the way up, Z position of one. Game by label, uses font Pusab, text says Matt Heaney Apps presents, font size of 50, font color of white, Positioned halfway across the screen, 95% up, and a Z position of 1. We've got a how to play label, again uses Pusab. Text is tap the discs before they vanish, with our instructions for the game. Font size of 40, font colour of white. Position halfway across the screen, 8% of the way up, Z position of 1. Credits label, here what I've done, I've got a label that says full credits in video description. If you want to put this on the App Store, you have to get the full credits in there somehow. Up to you how you do it. I normally make another scene and just show labels for the credits. To cover stuff for the graphics, the font, and maybe a bit of a shout out for Matt in the apps. So mine just says full credits in video description, which they are, check them out. Font size of 40, font color of white, positioned halfway across the screen, 4% of the way up, with a Z position of one. And then finally, start label, uses Pusab, Text says play, font size 150, font color of white, halfway across the screen, 35% of the way up, Z position of one. Now this one here is gonna be a little bit different because this will be a button. So we have to include a name for it, like so. Okay, so that is our main menu now designed. I hope you can see why I didn't go through each of these individually because they are all pretty much the exact same with some different text, different font sizes and stuff. But now that's our main menu set up. So in a few moments, we'll hit run and we'll check it out. But to see this, we have to change what scene will open up first when we open the game. Because at the moment, when we open the game, we're taken straight into the game scene and it would skip the main menu, which makes the main menu somewhat pointless. So we will fix it. So the main menu is the first thing that we will see. To do that, Let's jump into the game of view controller.swift. And as you may remember this all the way back when, at the moment it's saying take us straight into the game scene with our fixed scene size. All we've got to do is change game scene to main menu scene. And now when we open the game, we're taken straight into our main menu. And when we're there, we're gonna see all of this because we've made all of these objects in the did move to view. So let's hit run and let's check it out. So now when we open the game, we're taken into our main menu. Doesn't do anything yet, 
but hopefully at this point your main menu will look like this. So we just have two quick things left. First one, we want to set up the play button on the main menu to take us into the game. And then after that, one really small thing to finish and then we're all done. So in the main menu scene, we will set up our start button. So find some room which is not in a function. And we will set up the touches began. And this is gonna be the same logic and same code as we did for the game over scene. So we can rock it through this. So we're gonna say for touch, any object in touches. So now we can get all that information about our touch. We need to figure out where on the screen we have touched. So point of touch equals touch dot location in node self. So now point of touch will equal the coordinates where we tapped in the scene. From there, we can figure out what node we have tapped. So let tap node equal node at point, point of touch. And from that, we can figure out the name of the node. So we can now figure out if we have pushed the start label. So what we've got to do now is say if tapped node name equals equals start button, the name of our start label. And if that is the case, remember you're closing curly bracket, we didn't put it in for you. All you want to do is move into the game scene. So we will say let scene to move to, which is going to be the game scene. And we'll pass it the size. So the new scene will look the same in size as this one. Same with the scale mode. For both of these self.size and self.scale mode, self being the current scene. So making the new size the same as the size of this scene and the new scenes at scale mode the same as the scale mode of this scene. We need a transition. So let scene transition equal SK transition. We will stay consistent with fade with duration across 0.2 seconds and then present the scene, scene to move to, which is storing all that information for us with the transition scene, transition, which again is storing all that information about our transition. And just like that, our button is set up and ready to go. To finish off the button, we want to play that click sound effect, just to kind of stay consistent through every scene. So globally within the scene, we will say let click sound effect it's an skaction.play sound file name same as from the game over scene click.wav wait for completion is false and then all we got to do is when we push the start button play that sound effect like so and with that our main menu will now work we can tap on the button move into the game scene and play the game so check it out there's one very, very, very small thing to finish, but actually makes quite a big difference to your game. So let's hit run, let's check it out, and then finish up with the very last small task. So hit run. So here is the main menu. We can now tap play, and we're taken into the game. And we'll get a score, and then we'll get game over. And now from here, we can push exit and go back to the main menu. So we're very, very close to being done. Just one very small thing to fix. And that is, you may notice on your game, in the bottom right hand corner, we have those two little labels that tell us how many nodes we have on the screen. So how many sprite nodes, how many label nodes. And it's telling us our frames per second, which are running at 60. Now that's great for when you're developing, but when your game is finished and ready to go, you really don't want those there. So we'll jump into Xcode, we will turn those off, and then we're all done. So to turn those labels off, let's jump over into our game view controller. And here we're going to find skview.showfps. We'll set this to false. And skview show node count, which we will also set to false. And that's it. We now turn those off because they are kind of development tools which you don't want in the final version of your game. But with that, we're done. We have now successfully made a full iPhone game and you have now finished making disappearing discs. So let's hit run and let's check out our finished game. So here is our finished game. We have our main menu 
As you can see, those little labels down in the bottom right hand corner showing the node count and the frames per second is now gone. So we can jump in, we can play the game. It levels up to get harder and harder and harder. And when you get game over, we're taken to a game over scene. Shows our score and our high score. And from there we can play the game again and just keep playing. And there we go, it's all done. You have now successfully made a full iPhone game and you have made disappearing discs. If this was your first full iPhone game you've ever made, that's awesome, congratulations. And if you made iPhone games in the past, I hope you learned something that was really important to you. And with that, I guess we're all done with the first series back that Matt Heaney Apps has done in a long time. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you're still watching this video, I guess I'll give you some cool news. I really, really enjoyed making that tutorial series. And without a doubt, there's going to be quite a few more of these series. Thank you very much for watching the entire series. If you enjoyed the video, which I really hope you did, hit like, hit subscribe, and I will see you in our next full game series. Goodbye.